Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'll be showing you how I created my own USB to serial adapter board and we'll go through some of the design decisions I had to make and I will explain the reasoning behind making these choices. But first let me tell you the uh, background story. Personally I have always liked having my own USB to serial adapter and here are a few that I have designed something like 10 years ago or maybe more. Uh, the layout is not great, my PCB skills were obviously not as good as they are today but nonetheless I created this adapter uh, as an exercise but also for the important purpose of having a reliable and flexible tool. Reliable because I could control the chip that I'm using, it was a uh, Scilabs CP2103 and I was getting it from a uh, known distributor. And flexible because I had all of the I.O. of the chip broken out to 0.1 inch headers which would mean that I had the option to trigger a reset on a particular board or something along those lines. And I've also designed other adapters uh, based on FTDI chips and more recently on the uh, CH340 family of Chinese chips. So this brings me to today's project. I designed this new adapter for two reasons. One is the good old reason of reliability. You can't trust the adapters you're getting from AliExpress. They're almost always using fake chips and generally are of lower build quality. I wanted a reliable CP2104 series chip in here and uh, I wanted it to be able to sustain high bit rates for fast uploading of, of firmer images to target boards. Since I'm building a lot of IoT devices for my consulting clients, I also deal a lot with chips like the ESP8266 or ESP32. As you may know, these require Require an additional two pins IO0 and enable for triggering the correct reset sequence for entering the bootloader for firmware up upload. It's not worth adding the circuitry for switching those two pins on each board you manufacture. It makes more sense to have that circuitry on the programming board and just have the connections on the target board. Also another issue I wanted to solve is that of limited space and these days everyone wants smaller and smaller boards so you don't exactly have the space for 0.1 inch headers anymore. One of the uh, connectors that I like to use is these JST-SH series uh, 1 millimeter pitch size. And this pitch size and connector type seems like a sweet spot for my kind of work. Uh, it provides space savings but at the same time it's still easy to solder by hand if you need to and also it's inexpensive and easily available because of its popularity. So with this in mind I started designing this circuit in KiCad and I can tell you a bit uh, about uh, some of the uh, other design decisions I meant, I made and I went with a USB Type-C connection because well it's the future and uh, everything is switching to USB Type-C and it would be nice to have to keep less types of cables connected to my computer. And I also opted for some ESD protection and um, over current protection as well on the input because Remember, I want this to be a reliable tool. I have a jumper for selecting if VIO is, the, is connected to the internal supply 3.4 volts or externally supplied voltage. I have all of the IO pins uh, broken out to uh, 0.1 inch headers on the side and I have the automatic um, uh, reset circuitry in here. This is needed for the ESP32 IO0 and enable signals. And I also have the uh, new VoltLink connector Yep, I'm calling this board and concept VoltLink and if you're wondering why I chose this particular pinout, I wanted something that if accidentally reversed it would not short VCC to ground. So that's why I didn't put VCC and ground on the uh, far ends of the connector but rather next to each other. If the connection is somehow reversed you'll just end up with VCC connected to the enable pin which is not bad. And as a backup legacy connection I also have the same signals broken out to 0.1 inch headers just in case I want to use this as a plain old USB to serial adapter or if I want to build like a, a, an additional adapter externally from 0.1 inch to a different type of uh, connector. Once the PCB design was ready I uploaded the Gerber files to PCBWay.com which is the official provider of printed circuit boards for the Voltlog channel and this time I wanted to try something different. I was planning on panelizing this design to get the most uh, out of the PCB order but I instead opted for letting PCBWay panelize my design as part of their service and panelize they did. As you can see uh, these are the panels that I received. It's a uh, 3x2 panel with v-cut lines for separating the boards. And this is probably the uh, preferred way for 
uh, having rectangular boards because it uses less resources for making the V-cut lines in the production line as opposed to full routing. And they also add rails and uh, fiducials uh, on the panel because uh, you usually order boards like this when you put them through an assembly line and those are needed. And as usual, the quality is top notch. I have any gold plating on these boards and it wasn't really necessary for this project, but it looks really good. I also got a uh, stencil for these boards and I used my usual prototyping workflow to assemble five of these. I applied the uh, solder paste and here's an image of the paste deposition. Then I placed the components manually. Here's an image of that. And then I reflowed using my hot plate once again just a still image showing that and I was actually doing this on a weekend and I was really eager to test one of these boards out so I grabbed one immediately after it cooled down and rushed to plug in a USB Type-C cable when disaster struck. I forgot to solder the mechanical mounting pins for the USB Type-C connector and it ripped the tracks right off the PCB and this was indeed a facepalm moment which made me think uh, it would have been a good idea to at least place some solder stencil openings uh, over those holes in the footprint of the connector. This way it would have some minimum solder in those holes to uh, keep the connector uh, secured. After that happened, uh, I went and manually soldered the connector mounting pins and it was finally time for a proper test. And the board is automatically detected and installed by my Windows 10 machine and uh, by using one of these... Um, a JST SH six pin pigtails that you can get for uh, cheap from uh, AliExpress. We can try to uh, program one of my boards uh, based on uh, ESP32. For example, we can try with the uh, Christmas tree or uh, this is another project that I'm currently working on. And these boards, um, they do have the six pin JST connector only that uh, it doesn't have the correct inverse pinout because at the time of designing the uh, this board I didn't have the Volding programmer design ready so I didn't take into account the fact that on the target board the pinout needs to be mirrored because of the fact that uh, these connectors are keyed uh, and meaning they only go in a certain orientation uh, but that's an easy fix I just made myself like one of these uh, crossover uh, cables where the uh, wires run to the uh, other side now to prevent any uh, future mistakes like these happening regarding the pinouts, I designed two custom symbols for the Volink connection, a standard one meant to go on the USB to serial uh, board and a reverse pinout one that will uh, that is supposed to go on the target boards. That way when I start this, a new design, I don't have to worry about it. All the pins will be in the right order. I just choose the correct symbol and including uh, RX and TX signals are crossed. That time I will be able to use uh, a standard one-to-one -one pigtail cable that you get from AliExpress. And I'll put some links in the description so you can order some of these if you're interested. Now let's run a baud rate test to see if we can achieve high upload speeds for this ESP32. Typically people upload at 115k which is going to get the job done but a pretty long process for a large binary image. Here is for example how long it takes to flash this binary image at 115k. It takes about 11 seconds and this is just a simple test. In real world it's gonna take longer because you first need to erase the flash then write to different sections of the memory. So with the Volink adapter you can do this at 2 million baud rate. And let's test that maximum speed. It takes much less, just 2.3 seconds to do the same job at 2 million baud rate. And that's something like a 4x improvement, uh, probably more for a larger binary image. And this can matter a lot if you're a firmware developer hitting that upload button tens of times per day. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit the like button on this video because it's just an extra click, right? And it really helps the channel. Why wouldn't you do it? And by the way, if you've uh, seen the little RX and uh, TX LEDs shining bright, uh, you should know that they are powered from 3.3 volts through a 1K resistor. And if I were to use some basic LEDs, they would be very faint at this low current. However, I use some high efficiency LEDs and uh, I really like how bright these are uh, with a 1K resistor. And if you'd like me to do maybe a short uh, video for a couple of minutes 
to talk about these high efficiency LEDs? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, there is, however, one thing that I got wrong with these uh, LEDs. Uh, I marked them the wrong way around. So TX LED is actually RX LED. So have to address that in uh, Rev B of this board. Now the firmware running on the ESP32 right now is uh, uh, sending a lot of stuff. So that's why you see the uh, wrongfully uh, labeled TX LED uh, lit on. This is actually RX. Since I built five of these boards, I will have four extra ones that will go on sale on my Tindy store. So if you're interested in getting one, check out my Tindy store linked on screen right now and get one of these boards. I'm sorry I can only offer four of these for now, so they will likely be gone pretty fast. And keep in mind that the uh, TX and RX LEDs are swapped uh, in the way they are labeled on this uh, Rev A of the PCB. And if you care about that, well, don't order one. I'm pretty happy with how this uh, project turned out and I already have a couple of ideas for improvement in a future Rev B. Uh, for example, one idea would be to add a small switch to allow me to turn on or off the uh, 3.3 uh, volt rail present on the Voltlink connector. I typically do not power my target boards from the programmer so it would be nice to be able to quickly toggle that rail on or off uh, onto the uh, connection with a switch. And uh, I would also like to add a uh, capacitor between the enable signal and ground to help prevent some glitches that lead to a uh, timeout when trying to connect to uh, an, an expressive chip. But this only uh, happens uh, on certain systems. For example, I have four computers I tested on and this issue only manifests itself on one of those four computers. But if you're having those uh, timeout uh, problems, I might do a separate video on the, on the subject. It's worth adding a capacitor between the enable signal and ground and that will uh, bring it back to life. And if you're just starting out with electronics and you, you are just uh, starting out with PCB design, I highly recommend you try to build something like this as your first project. I, I admit it, it can be a challenging ex exercise for a beginner, especially because you might be dealing with uh, the USB connection or different voltage rails and there will most likely be a, a QFN chip, which is not as easy to solder. But for those who are brave enough, I think the rewards will be great as well. And it will give you a jump start into electronics design. You'll also be able to experience the joy of using a tool that you designed and built yourself and that should provide some energy to fuel your brain for the current and future projects that you're working on. This design is open source. You'll find a GitHub link below so you can download it, you can order your own PCBs or if you'd like to order a ready assembled one, uh, you can check out the uh, TND store which will be linked on screen right now. That was all for today. Thank you for watching and let me know in the comments if you have ever designed your own USB to serial board and what was the main reason for doing it. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon with as little as $1 per month and smash that like button. I will see you soon.